Hi, I'm Susie Dingle, and today I'm feeling like the four-year-old girl I used to be sitting on my front steps next to a patch of dianthus. I'd like to share with you some of the other flowers that are essential for me in my cottagecore fragrant garden. This plant, which is a type of carnation, and it's a perennial, it keeps coming back, and it's brown cover. It's highly fragrant. I remember as a child sitting there being obsessed with just smelling it and looking at it. It's sometimes called clove pink. I guess it does smell a little bit like a clove, but uh, it's just a typical carnation fragrance. This dianthus I think of as a quintessential cottage plant. It's fragrant, it's trouble free, it attracts beneficial insects, and it lasts a long time in a vase as well. It's so fragrant. Oh my goodness. This flower was certainly one of the main ones that helped shape my aesthetic and preferences as a gardener early on. I simply can't imagine having a garden without one in it, and I do believe that it was this particular one was responsible for really cementing and shaping my cottage core aesthetic. A friend just stopped by. And it's really funny because that friend once told me that I had too many flowers in the front, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> the fragrance begins in mid-January when the dawn viburnum opens up its tiny pink flowers on leafless branches and it doesn't hurt the shrub at all to trim off a few stems and bring them inside. This is Rosa Rugosa. It is a very fragrant rose and it's a particular kind called pavement, not like the sidewalk pavement, but I believe it was German bread. So that, that's where the name came from. This one I think is called Purple. Anyway, I recommend it in a cottage core fragrant garden because of all the, not only because of the, the high fragrance of it, and it is, even the petals after you uh, collect them and put them, say dry them in potpourri, they are fragrant for a really long time. But there's lots of other reasons to love this plant in a cottage garden. It's unfussy, uncomplicated, it can handle some neglect, a lot of neglect actually, and it's very vigorous. Its leaves are always pretty, no matter what. I don't see any disease on them ever, and I love the apple green color that comes out. It gets rose hips after the flowers have uh, bloomed out, and that's good for making tea and such, and also for wildlife. The flowers themselves, are, they don't look bad as they age. They don't look mushy or brown or anything like that. They just kind of fall off and then the beautiful rose hips start forming. This particular rose I'll get several flushes out of. I can cut it all the way back to the ground if I want, if it's getting a little too large, and then it flushes right out again that year and blooms. So love this rose, definitely on my cottage core fragrant flower list. This is a peony and it's definitely on my list of fragrant flowers. Right now, this peony is pretty fragrant. Sometimes it's not as fragrant, but it's about 11 o'clock in the morning and it's starting to put on some good perfume. 
To me, this looks like a party dress, a flower that's just excited and ready to go to the dance. It's all ruffly and pink and overblown and just looks like a pure joy to me. The peony is probably on most people's fragrant flower list. It's sure on mine. This one was on the property when we moved here. I have no idea what kind it is. It doesn't really matter to me. It's fragrant and it's very pretty. Hi, I'm back here staying out of the sun. I'm next to a patch of lavender. Any kind of lavender is good in my book. It just needs to be cold tolerant for your area and you need a dry site so it doesn't have any kind of water logging there. And if it's fragrant, some lavenders are more fragrant than others. This one is. It's Intermedia Grosso. It's the kind that lavender wands are usually made out of. Very big buds, long stems, violet color, highly, highly fragrant. I'm going to leave a link for how I'm restoring this old shrub right now. And for gardens in USDA Zone 8 or warmer, I like to include the Star Jasmine Vine. This shrub is called a Mexican orange. Uh, it's Choicea ternata, and this one happens to be a cultivar called Aztec Pearl. It has very thin leaves compared to the just regular Choicea ternata. And it is past its flower right now. This is a highly fragrant shrub that blooms in May, even late April sometimes, but for sure you're gonna get at least three weeks of bloom out of it. You can prune it back and get a second flush of, of, of blooms. It also can survive in really bright sun or some shade. Won't flower as well in deep shade, but it definitely will survive. As far as its care, it's also a very forgiving shrub. It can handle pruning and it will look good if you do that, if you let it go. Well, it, it can look a little bit rangy, but it never looks bad, bad. And it doesn't need a lot of water. It just maybe just wants to be admired and, and uh, smelled every once in a while. I want to give an honorable mention to the bearded iris because it has the smell of what I think smells like a ice cream shop. You do have to open it up and get your nose in there to smell it, but it, it's wonderful. And because of that, I always grow at least a small stand of them in my gardens. Now, I don't usually grow a lot of them because they are kind of heavy maintenance as far as having to dig them up and replant them every couple of years. You get the fresh uh, rhizomes around the outside edge and then replant those and discard the center part of it. But other than that, they're, they're pretty easygoing plants. It's just that digging every couple of years that I'm like, eh, I'm not so sure I want to do too much of that. They're well worth growing though. And when I've had a lot more sun and a lot more space, I have grown quite a few of them. These are awfully tall. I inherited these from someone, so I'm not even sure what kind they are. They are rather on the tall side. If you don't want them to be as floppy, then you can get a shorter variety. By the way, irises, these dark purple ones, are beautiful when they're backlit by the sun. So consider that and the placement. The plants I've shown you so far have been sun loving, but there are some shade loving fragrant flowering plants in my garden. Behind me in this shady oasis are two of my essential shrubs for a cottage garden for fragrance. One is Daphneodora 
and the other one is a sarcococca. Actually, I have a couple of different kinds of sarcococca back here. That one smells like vanilla and the Daphne Odora is just better than a bottled perfume or essential oils, let me tell you. It can, it, one bloom can fragrance an entire, permeate an entire room. It's fantastic. They stay in leaf all year round, even in the coldest winter in our area. So that's a, wel that's a welcome thing, right? To have some greenery in the winter time. They both bloom early in the season. So we're talking March, April, right around in there. And they both handle dry shade. You don't have to provide any additional water unless you, you know, to establish them, you do obviously till they're on their own. But after that, just if you notice that they are, are drooping or not growing well, then you have to look at all the conditions. Uh, how are they up too close to a building? Are they extra dry? It's been my experience that you just put them in a dry, shady location. As long as there isn't a ton of root competition from larger trees and such, or larger shrubs, they do really, really well on their own. What more could you ask for? Well, oh yes, cut flowers. They both hold up really well in a vase and they perfume the entire room. I am under the arbor in my woodland garden, and this path is lined with a ground cover called geranium macrorhizum. Both the leaves and the flowers smell like pine. It is a, a stronger fragrance than what some people like. I, I love it. I absolutely love it, and I use this all the time in flower arrangements. It grows on top of the soil. It can grow in very dense, dry shade. It's my number one ground cover in the shade in general, but especially for a cottage garden. I also grow sweet woodruff and violets that are fragrant and grow well in the shade. In this shady nook is a valerian Soon it will have tall stems with very fragrant white flower heads on it. It's an, another easy care plant other than just keeping it staked up when it's in bloom. And behind me is a sweet autumn clematis. It looks pretty bad right now, but come the fall, it's gonna have amazingly fragrant flowers on it that will drip down from the arbor or the area where I have it trained up. Now, it's considered invasive in some areas, so do check and make sure that it's not invasive in your area. Here, I don't have a problem with it, and it's easy for me to contain it. But definitely, I grow this for the fall fragrance. No garden of mine would be complete without lilies, fragrant lilies, and there are several different kinds. I grow whatever ones I can get a hold of, particularly stargazers, but there are many different colors and heights and, and shapes of flowers, so do look for them. They can be grown with even a small amount of sun, but their preference is to have their heads in the sun and their feet in the shade. I grow them wherever I can. I break off the little bulblets and plant them and see how they're going to do. And you can just even start with a little one and, and seed your entire garden if you want. Oftentimes people will plant them on a little hill, which is wonderful to do if you are able to do that. I haven't let, let that stop me though from planting them wherever I feel like I want to. Just make sure that their root zone is cool. 
just discovered I got a rip in my overalls from the garden, but you know, <laughs> that happens. If you have a special flower that you'd like to share, please do so in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I sure appreciate that. Until next time, keep dreaming in the garden. Bye. That's how big the hole is. It can fit a flower in. That's a good idea. Maybe I should just reinforce the edges of it and leave a little hole where I can tuck a flower in it. <laughs>